When all felt lost, when life seemed absent in the desert, a small green leaf grew. Hope. This is Quebrada Verde, a smudge of green life in the barren outskirts of Lima, Peru's capital city. In this video, you'll see how Quebrada Verde and its people are using Bitcoin to think about their future a little differently. This small community in Peru has set up a Bitcoin-based circular economy, including farmers, restaurants, teachers, a church, and more. It's a sneak peek into the future of Bitcoin-driven economies. Keep watching to join me on my journey exploring the stories of this Peruvian community. You're probably familiar with Machu Picchu, the beautiful beaches, the Andes, the rich Inca culture that Peru is famous for. But there's also this side to Peru, the real Peru, where a lot of the Bitcoin educational projects and initiatives are taking place. First, we visited the local church in Quebrada Verde, where I met with Sonia. Sonia is a lion-hearted activist who coordinates the programs organized by the NGO Motive. Peru is predominantly Catholic, and life in these towns often revolves around the church. Sonia explained to us how mothers pick up new skills, which sometimes lead to starting their own businesses. Bueno, acá enseñamos inglés after school y también taller de guitarra, fútbol y también emprende con las clases de repostería y con proyecto de abrir una clase de, de volei. We watched the women from the cooking workshop as they prepared a fresh batch of pastries for sale, generously treating us to some tasty muffins. I told the mothers that I was interested in their lovely Bitcoin aprons and they kindly offered to sell me one of theirs. Clearly, it suited my lanky frame perfectly. The women also showed us one of their more elaborative sound money cakes, a heavy bag of tasty coins. Here's one of the after-school classes that are paid for in Bitcoin, which looks onto the patch of green land from which Quebrada Verde, verde meaning green, gets its name. It's the first patch of green I've seen for quite a long time. It's really nice to see. We then walked around the church and hung out with some of the kids. I asked them if they knew about Bitcoin. Tu mamá usa Bitcoin. Ah, sus mamás y cómo usan Bitcoin sus mamás? Ah, por su celular. Para qué? Para qué usen? Para pagar. Para pagar. Ah, un sueldo virtual. ¿Y qué es virtual? ¿Qué quiere decir virtual para ustedes? Que lo mando y llega... Como yape. Como yape. Como yape. <laughs> Let's quiz Sonia a little more about how this community uses Bitcoin. ¿Cómo pagan los niños? Los niños pagan con Bitcoin, con su billetera. ¿Cuánto se pagan? Eh, dos soles. ¿Dos soles cada clase? Cada clase. ¿Y hace cuándo estás haciendo eso? Hace ya dos años, más o menos, ahora en diciembre. ¿Cómo hacen para vivir con esta volatilidad? No afecta mucho. Cuando baja, bueno, esperan y a veces pum, sube y, y se pone igual, ¿no? Pagan al maestro con, con lo que tienen. Se, eh, recibieron dos soles y bajó a 1.98. Bueno, van y pagan con el 1.98. Mm. Pero no ha afectado porque igual acá en Perú se vive con la moneda igual, que sube, baja. La gente igual sigue viviendo. We just spoke to uh, Sonia about how they deal with the volatility of Bitcoin because of course the price goes up and down quite sharply sometimes. What do you make of the volatility situation and what they're doing here in Peru? Like, how are they able to live through this volatility? Dude, this is something amazing. They started this two years ago. Every week they get paid. So since they get paid every week, it doesn't make a difference. They pay two souls for every class for a guitar or football or your after classes. So even if the price changes, it, two souls becomes 1.98 or 1.96 and people pay it and it's good. Mm -hmm. And they don't feel that pain that we feel when we get an entire period of a month together. So that's beautifully done and thanks to Motive Peru for giving them regularly. I have never seen people so easily using a wallet. This is how you control the volatility. I think it's just that thing of DCAing, right? Rather than DCAing into Bitcoin, these guys are getting like sort of earning and earn CA or something yeah. in Bitcoin. So it reduces your volatility exposure. She's like, yeah, when it goes up, it's nice. But also when it goes down, it's not the biggest deal. Yeah. At the end of the day, 3,000 sats is 3,000 sats, you know. It is. It will always be 3,000 sats. sats. So that's good. But what do I mean by this? Well, because there will never ever be more than 21 million Bitcoin, because it is a fixed supply currency, the 3,000 sats the Peruvians pay will be the exact percentage of the total amount forever. 
3000 sats is 0 0.0000, you get the idea, 143% of the total supply of 21 million Bitcoin because there are 100 million sats in one Bitcoin. The 21 million Bitcoin or 2.1 quadrillion Satoshis fixed limit is quite a weird thing to wrap your head around. With fiat or government money, like pounds, dollars and euros, there's no fixed supply because commercial and central banks always create money through loaning or printing. You cannot say that two euros will always equal two euros because those two euros are being diluted in that inflating supply of currency. So your two euros actually lose value over time by design. Whereas historically, Bitcoin has become more valuable over time. For example, the 3,000 sats that Sonia and her community paid for those classes in Peru in September is still this tiny fraction of the total supply, and it always will be. And the purchasing power of that 3,000 sats has actually gone up by a factor of two. But those two euros? Well. Sí, exactly. Qué rápido, sí. Y haces man un poco menos lento. Sí, mejor. Ahí suena un poco más rico. ¿no? Sí, muy bien, muy bien. Bought cake with Bitcoin, oh, bought an apron with Bitcoin. Good people using Bitcoin to improve, to improve all sorts of things, really. What do you think, Paco? I am just so happy that this is the first church that is letting Bitcoin activities take place. Leaving the church, I went to the town centre where I was surprised and even incredulous to see that locals were using Bitcoin in their everyday transactions. They were topping up their phones or simply buying groceries at the Bitcoin friendly stores. The lady behind me is uh, topping up her phone with internet SIM credit with Bitcoin because of course the place accepts Bitcoin. So this again is where the economy becomes more circular. Walking into the shop now to see if people are using Bitcoin again. It looks to be the case. Hola, buenas. Uh, All like, these paid actors yes, are using swear, Bitcoin. It's great, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're at another little shop in Quebrada Verde that's accepting Bitcoin. And again, I'm struck by the fact that people just find it so normal here to use Bitcoin. And they say how easy it is to use, how secure it is to use, and how it's made their lives a bit easier. It's just like the way you would use a credit card or Apple Pay or Android Pay at home. That's how they're using Bitcoin here, because it's the easiest way to get stuff done. Leaving the town centre behind, Sonia and I hopped into one of the local Uber XLs. There weren't any seatbelts and I barely squeezed into the back seat. We bounced along the dirt road so hard it felt like a budget roller coaster ride. Our destination was Raquel's family farm, where Raquel and her family sow vegetables, they raise pigs and chickens to trade for Bitcoin with both local business owners and residents in the area. But how do people learn about Bitcoin? And how do they know whether it's the right tool for the job? La gente para ellos es más fácil, confiable, seguro y es muy, mucho más rápido. Es un, una billetera que es propia para ellos. Eh, nadie puede entrar a su propia billetera y sacarles dinero. Entonces la gente eh, ve esa seguridad y prefiere billetera Bitcoin. O una vez que ya lo empezaron a utilizar y usar con frecuencia, se dieron cuenta que es rápido, fácil, sobre todo pues ahora con el utilización del código QR, ¿no? Uh, it's so peculiar to see this just here. But yeah, they're accepting Bitcoin for growing their fruit and vegetables, which they sell. Um, and this is one of the farmers. ¿Cómo se llama, Rodan? Raquel. Oh. ¿Y le gusta Bitcoin? Oh. Sí. sí. Claro, nos ayuda. Nos ayuda. Sí. <laughs> so Raquel showed us around the farm, and with the help of Sonia, I had a crash course in the never-ending list of indigenous vegetables and fruits that Raquel's farm grows. Hola, Piggy. Wow. Pabanitos. Pabanitos. Wow. Peruanos. Sí. Gracias, eh? Te pago en sats. I also had the opportunity to interview some piggies on Bitcoin. Hello, chaps. Do you know much about Bitcoin circular economies? Will Bitcoin be above or below 30k by the end of the year? Personally, I get nervous about making Bitcoin price predictions and I think I might get slaughtered. De todo lo que sembramos. Este es fresa. Fresa, strawberries. Ajá, cebollita china, lechuga. Ahí se va a volver a sembrar también. El maíz, um, lo vendo pues para la, las tiendas uh -huh. que están arriba. Por el Bitcoin, pues, trabajamos con el Bitcoin. Siempre hemos estado yendo a la iglesia y entonces ahí empezó un poco el programa, ¿no? Y eso no, 
nos incentivó que ella iba a presentarse, llegó acá a, a Quebrada Verde porque ni en Pachacama hay todavía uh -huh, uh -huh. <ríe> y eso nos ayudó un montón, ¿no? Sí. Para las familias, para los programas que hay para los niños, uh -huh. para los talleres que se hacen en la comunidad, y okay. un montón. Wow. Sí. So, Raquel here, as she's explaining, is sowing seeds, fruits, vegetables, people in the shops are buying that produce with Bitcoin that they've earned through selling cakes or through attending classes or through teaching themselves. So the Bitcoin is, is slowly phasing out or replacing the soul here. Still really, really odd for me. Like obviously I'm a big Bitcoin advocate and obviously I'm really into Bitcoin, but I still arrive at a farm. I see a Bitcoin accepted here sign and I think what on earth is that doing there? Why, why does that make any sense at all? And look, look at the result of it all. Look at the fruits of this labor. Look at the proof of work that comes out of people using this tool, which makes their lives a bit easier. There's just one more story that almost completes this circular economy in Quebrada Verde, and certainly our adventure there, and it's called La Valiente, or The Brave. They really live up to their name as the owners took a leap of faith in starting the business. So we're in a pizza joint here that's running on Bitcoin, about to pay for our lunch, of course, in Bitcoin. And I want to understand why they're doing it and how it all happened. Mm, bueno, La Valiente, antes, comenzó como cuatro bocas, eh? pero este, vino lo que era pandemia, eh, cerraron muchos locales para tener dinero. Hacíamos todo lo que son pizzas, pero todo lo que es delivery, delivery, delivery. Pero vino de nuevo lo que es la normalidad, ¿no? Y se acabó bastante lo que es delivery. Entonces nos teníamos así entre la espada y la pared porque habíamos sacado montos grandes de, de dinero del banco. Entonces, ¿dónde lo pagamos? ¿Cómo hacemos? Dijimos, ¿sabes qué? Vayamos a Quebrada Verde. Lo pusimos la valiente porque fuimos bien valientes para poder sacar otro dinerito más y poder poner acá un localcito, ¿no? Ya vamos a cumplir un añito. Yo sé que... Aún todos no nos conocen, pero la mayoría que nos ha conocido han dicho que son buenas pizzas, atendemos súper bien y a la vez hemos conocido a estas maravillosas personas. Nos trajeron lo que es Bitcoin. El Bitcoin nos ha ayudado a con hacernos conocer mucho más, de que puedan tener la posibilidad de poder pagar más rápido, más sencillo y a la vez también nosotros aumentar un poquito más las ventas, ¿no? Y nosotros también podemos consumir en otro lugar también que, que pueda tener Bitcoin y a la vez también es hacer ese intercambio. ¿Cómo compran las materiales? ¿Lo, lo compran en Bitcoin? Sí, eh, tenemos dos proveedores, uno que compramos tomate, albahaca, todo lo que son verduras, a un aceñito que también acepta Bitcoin y lo que son este, embutidos. También hay un señor en Pachacama que también me, me abastece con lo que es este mozzarella, dambo. ¿Con Bitcoin? Con Bitcoin. Uh -huh. ¿Y cuántas personas pagan acá en Bitcoin? Más o menos. Y vienen como unas seis personas, dependiendo, ¿no? Okay. Dependiendo cómo arriba. Hay algunos turistas que han venido acá a las lomas y que se han sorprendido que hemos tenido Bitcoin. Ah. Se han alegrado porque a la vez también es muy tedioso estar haciendo el cambio a lo que es a, a soles de lo que nosotros recibimos básicamente, pues, ¿no? ¡Wow! Gracias. Gracias. Súper bien. Ahí vamos. Gracias, hermano. So you almost have a complete circular economy, all paid for in Bitcoin. The farmer grows the crops, the vegetables, the tomatoes that are used in the pizzeria behind me. The pizzeria pays the farmers for the, that produce and then they sell it for Bitcoin and people in the village pay for their pizzas in Bitcoin and they also pay for other goods and services around here. And as the lovely pizza chef explains, it's really helped her out. You know, it's easy to use, it's faster, it's opened up to a broader markets. And you can sort of see that this pizzeria really does stand out in a quite poor town as being more of an investment, you know, that, that there's nice chairs, it's got sort of nice artwork going on in there. There's a giant pizza oven. It's the sort of pizza oven you'd see in the center of Lima, downtown Lima, as well as in, you know, we're out in the sticks right now in the middle of Quebrada Verde. So isn't that so cool that that's really empowered her and really brought up her business to be more than it could have been um, without Bitcoin. That almost concludes our story of Quebrada Verde. There's just a couple of things I want to say here. Firstly, it's that I think Bitcoin really is hope and it's certainly a lifeline for people living in really poor and disadvantaged areas around the world. In Sonia's community, it really is the best tool for the job and it's had all sorts of wonderful positive consequences for not just her, but the local community. I can't wait to visit Quebrada Verde in a couple of years time to see 
where that takes the town, where the introduction of Bitcoin into this town takes the people there. Thank you guys so much for watching and for supporting me on this. I would love it if you could give me feedback as I'm quite new to this video journalism thing and I really just want to bring Bitcoin stories to life from around the world and share them with people to show that Bitcoin isn't just a tool for the wealthy Westerners and in fact it's changing lives all over the world in ways that we struggle to comprehend and even struggle to believe. Like as you could see in my own reporting I was a tad incredulous about the use of Bitcoin in these places, joking that they were paid actors, for example. So yeah, I want to continue doing this kind of thing and I want to get better at doing this kind of thing. So please do leave a comment and just suggest where I might be able to improve or what you might want to see from these stories around the world. And um, thank you so much for that in advance. And if you do like this kind of thing, then please click subscribe. I am trying to deliver a story once a week, but I'm struggling and I would love to uh, do more and more. And the more subscribers I have, the more views I have, the easier it is to get monetized and to keep going. So yeah, please do click subscribe um, leave a comment if you can thank you guys for watching and thank plan b network for providing me with the funding to be able to do this kind of thing plan b network is your one-stop shop for all things bitcoin education it is a fantastic resource please check it out and please continue your bitcoin learning journey there is no end to the bitcoin rabbit hole once you're done checking out plan b you might want to buy some bitcoin i can't tell you to buy some bitcoin but i can certainly suggest a good place to consider buying bitcoin which is coin corner a uk-based bitcoin exchange run by fantastic people they're also one of my sponsors and i love working with them so do check out coin corner as well if you've made it this far to the end of the video then you must like this kind of thing so i can suggest that you should check out this video why because it's also about a bitcoin circular economy and you're going to learn something and you might also be like oh my god why do they use bitcoin there um, as i am sometimes too thank you so much i can't wait to see you on the next one and uh, yeah do what you love and save in bitcoin